listened. I've mentioned the Raid movies before and some of y'all actually listened and experienced those bad boys and then tweeted at me on how it freaking changed your life. But I know some of y'all still haven't watched them. In my opinion, those are two of some of the best action films ever made. So when I heard that the director, Gareth Evans, was making a Netflix movie where Dan Stevens would be the guest in a cult island where he starts killing them one by one... I opened a second account. It's obviously hard to top your work of arts that came before, but I still think that this one was a solid rent it. It's super bloody, and it has one of the most interesting religious metaphors of the year. Let me explain. So there's this dude named Malcolm who becomes a prophet for these people after none of them wanted to pay taxes to the king, and they all fled to this random island. Something I'll probably do in the IRS. Nothing actually gets proven to these people who get promised that there's a goddess on this island who, you know, only Malcolm can talk to, who's gonna provide crops and shelter and life for them. She doesn't. They actually end up at a point where these people are keeping Passover on a daily basis, except the blood that they're putting outside their doors is their own. <laughs> So needless to say, this dude needs to find a way to get some food for his people before they all die. So he decides to kidnap a rich girl from the mainland in order to hold her for ransom. But little does he know, Dan Stevens was cast in this movie. He was actually a part of a missionary, as we see in his silence flashback, where he went to go show these people the word of God, but since they were so full of venom, they let the devil in instead. Dude gets a bigger cross than Nick Cannon stamped on his back, and would immediately become a villain if this were a pure flicks film, because he just believes that God is dead. So with that vendetta, he decides to go to the island to take down this cult and get his sister back, and the only reason he doesn't get caught right away as the intruder is because he saves the main guy from this dude. For king and country! Did you bring anyone at all that you were supposed to? Thomas is safe in the meantime since he's now blood brothers with Malcolm, but since they still don't know who the snitch is on the island, they drag out the sister they're holding for ransom and legit just poker with a stick. They eventually try to capture him and he hides down below the floorboards where the blood goes, which if that wasn't bad enough, <laughs> oh hell no. So it turns out that there actually is a goddess in this island who is able to help flourish it, but it looks like the witch from freaking Suicide Squad. It turns out that back in the day, Malcolm and his two buds were the first to arrive on this island, and they actually encountered her, and seeing that she actually had these Tafiti-like powers for the island, they decided to lock her up and force sacrifices on her in order to please their people. So there's a little bit of an irony there in uh, getting on a boat to escape oppression only to arrive in a place that ain't yours and oppress somebody else. I've always been more afraid of what people are capable of as opposed to what like demons or, sure. or, or what sort of creatures are, uh, are, are capable of. At this point, these two don't escape the curse of being co-pastor kids and they knock each other up, which sucks when the dad finds out. <laughs> Father, please, I, I can explain. Uh, please, my job. This man ain't pro anything, so he legit grabs a knife and literally carves out his grandchild, killing his daughter as well. So when Timmy Chalamet Jr. takes out his dagger, he recalls that scene from The Raid 2, slashes his in-law, but doesn't cut him by his neck far enough to kill him, and Quim blames the entire murder on the boy. Somebody help! He killed him! Now, Quinn, being one of the three OGs who landed on the island, decides that he's tired of not being the leader that Malcolm is and convinces the town to crucible this boy as we get a POV of his head getting squished along with these black clansmen. So after recreating a Kanye music video, dude drills this kid harder than Chicago, and that's when the third OG arrives to see his son being killed. He sets off to go murder the goddess to end all of this madness. Thomas does his pimp move and dips, and then he does a backtracking dips, cause now he's stuck inside this warehouse with a creature from Silent Hill. This thing I think is supposed to be like some demigod that's a servant to the goddess, but since Thomas refuses to die Terminus style, he hits this zombie from The Last of Us looking dude and goes all beast mode as he grinds this creature who conveniently is called the Grinder. He meets the goddess who looks like Elon Musk, and after what I saw as her transferring her powers and memory to him, she just straight up asks him to kill her so that she can be set free, and the whole island gets lit. 
Now, Quinn at this point has gone full Ben season five of Lost, right? He's locked up these chicks saying that he's going to cut them up. He wants to take over the entire island because he's angry he was never leader. He's talking about how you can make up a religion in order to control people during a crisis and all of these things that, of course, can be facts. And I'm not saying that I don't disagree with this madness that can happen. It's just that he sounded like a freaking six year old. <laughs> So believe me when I say that seeing him go was one of the most satisfying movie deaths of the year. Straight did division on this man's body. Sadly, he did get some jabs in on Thomas, which interestingly enough, kind of goes with the biblical story of Thomas. You know, he was one of Yeshua's disciples who legit said that he would die with him, yet that's not what he went down knowing for in history. In fact, he's known as Doubting Thomas by everybody since he was the one disciple who didn't believe that he had been resurrected unless he himself touched the wounds on his side, which is where he was pierced. And in the movie, Thomas ends up feeling his own pierced side, and that's when he starts believing again. Everyone escapes the island, including his sister, since he saved her, as he stays behind, bleeding out, becoming the new god of this island as he inherits her powers. So, he's practically the new Jacob from Lost now. This could be a prequel. Thank you guys for checking out this video. I'm curious to know your thoughts on this movie. Let me know down below. Like I said, before y'all even watch this one, y'all gotta go watch both Raid movies because they're fantastic. But I'm curious to know your theories on this. Uh, in, in terms of the ending, you know, and I say that he becomes the god of the island, you can see it in his eyes literally turning into the same eyes that the goddess had, uh, his blood sprouting out, you know, the flowers, so it has the same power. I hope Malcolm don't do anything since it's, it seems like he's still alive and he's right there. But if you don't believe me, here's the quote from the director where he said that he saw it as him now becoming the new guardian of the island. I know it's a director's quote. Some of y'all will Sicario me in the same way. But I'm curious to know your thoughts about this down below in the comment section. Let me know whether you liked it, whether you didn't. Make sure you watch the raids. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And the smoke monster won't come after you.